There is no good enough score in the MAT, the Mathematics Admissions Test for Oxford. And this is coming from me, someone who has sat the MAT, who has studied math at Oxford. There is no MAT score that is going to get you into Oxford. The crucial part is that they have to take the MAT and the interview. They don't care about your personal statement, I've talked about that before. Oxford and Cambridge, your MAT, or Oxford at least, the MAT and the interview, Cambridge the interview and step, same idea. You have to do well in both. That basically summarises this whole video, so if you want to click off, fine. I'm going to go into a bit more depth though. So, in terms of the MAT, what is a good score? A good score is 80 or higher. I'd say if you're getting 80 or higher, you're very likely to get into an interview. 99% chance plus. I think the only reason you wouldn't is if you have really rubbish predicted grades or there's something else that I'm missing here. Um, but how it works in terms of how they decide who to invite to interview at Oxford, obviously you do the MAT first, then you get um, you potentially get invited to interview, is they have an upper score and a lower score. This upper score out of 100 is normally quite high, normally around 90. If you get 90 or higher, you will get through to an interview um, and you'll get an offer, you'll get an email saying, hey, good stuff, you're going to get an interview. Um, and similarly, there's a lower score where if you get lower than a certain number, let's say it's around 50 to 60 marks uh, in the uh, in the MAT, uh, you'll say, hey, sorry, not good enough, bye bye, and you'll get rejected. And then most people will fall in the middle between 60 and 90, their score in the MAT. And of course, then they've got to do a bit more inspection. Obviously, the people with the higher scores are more likely to get an offer, uh, but then they'll take into account things like your predicted grades, your, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to say personal statement, they don't care about your personal statement, but your predicted grades, if there's anything else, like other kind of things that you've done, uh, qualifications or any other things they should consider, maybe your background, so if you come from a slightly lower, oh, I forget what it's called, but uh, like a worse postcode, uh, maybe a school that doesn't send so many students to Oxbridge, those sorts of things, but the majority will be your MAT score, so the higher the MAT score you get, the more likely you will be uh, to get an interview. So. In that sense, you want to be getting as high a score as possible in the MAT. Now, what you see online from some people is that, oh, you only need a certain score to get to an interview. And that's essentially what I've said. If you get a 90 or higher, you're going to get to an interview. But what that doesn't mean is then by that point, your MAT is irrelevant. No, you get to an interview and you do perform in your interview. And then what they do is they look at your interview performance alongside your uh, MAT performance and they take a kind of not average score but they take both those things into consideration when deciding whether to give you an offer or not. So with that in mind, in theory, you should be aiming for 100 in the MAT. You should be aiming for as high a score as possible because that alongside with a strong interview performance is going to get you an offer. You can't just do well in the MAT and sack off the interview or vice versa. You have to do well in both. So. When you're looking to prepare for the MAT, you're going to be doing past papers. The very obvious and natural thing to do is smart yourself and see how well you're doing and try and get as high a score as possible. What you don't want to do is just look at the score averages that they have on their website and say, oh, I've got higher than 77.3 marks, which was the average this year, so I'd get an offer. It just means that you would maybe likely get to the interview round. But then obviously there's a correlation between if you do well in the MAT, you're going to do well in the interview. On, on average, but there's definitely examples of people in the past. I had a student who I helped once with the MAT, he got 96 in the MAT and then got rejected in the interview. 96 in the MAT and got rejected after the interview. His interview wasn't that great. So just to be clear, there's no score, no MAT score can get you into Oxford. You can get 100 and get rejected. So just take bear, bear that in mind, it's the interview and the MAT is what gets you the offer. So, that being said, there is no good enough MAT score. The higher the better, aim for 100. If you're not getting 100, that means you made a mistake somewhere. Where is that mistake? Look at that mistake, analyze that mistake. Why did you make that mistake? Was it a lack of time? Was it you didn't know how to approach your problem? Was it you just made a silly mathematical error? One of those three things, or maybe something else, is causing you to lose marks. Address that issue, don't make that mistake next time. Anyway, I'll leave a, a, a video on screen of what you should do over the summer holidays to best prepare yourself for the admission cycle. Um, go and check that out and I'll catch you over there.